And as soon as you copy it there and try to copy it back to another iPad or iPhone, it will be corrupted. It will not work. File management in iPad or iPhone is a challenge, but with the Files app, you can actually make things a little more easy for yourself. So what I'm gonna do here is give you my five key tips for using the Files app here on the iPad or your iPhone. Number one thing that you need to know about the Files app is where you store your stuff and setting up your locations. So over here on the left, you can see we've got all of our locations and I've probably got some here that if you're starting out with iOS or iPad OS, you may not have things like Audio Share and Dropbox here. You can integrate with all of your different platforms. Well, what you can do is actually set those up by using your settings here. So if we click or tap on this button here, you'll notice that we have the edit sidebar. So this is called our sidebar here in files. We can edit the sidebar and look at this. We can add and remove different things. So if I wanted to add in this sand disconnect or this iCab mobile browser, I can do that. And of course I've already added in. So yours may look something like this. If you haven't installed Dropbox and uh, Google Drive and OneDrive, you may have a sidebar that looks like that. All you need to do is tap up here and any apps that you have installed that have files integration, so that's important, needs to have files integration, will be here and available for you to add in. And this makes it super easy to view your files directly from within here and transfer files and copy them between locations which is what we're going to look at now how do you copy files so how do you send files from one place to another well here's something that uh, that I'd have to do quite often and that is move things over to my iCloud drive from either my on my iPad or my audio share files location so for instance if I'm on my iPad here and say I've saved something in GarageBand so I've got this one here uh, well let's go to this one Pete is noob well that's <laughs> that's a that's a Cubasis one we'll use this for GarageBand for simplicity so say I have this GarageBand project that's on my iPad now that's a problem because if my iPad goes for a swim in the creek guess Guess what? I lose that file. But if I copy it over to iCloud Drive, I don't lose that file. So how do we do that? Well, we select it. We tap there. We select on this one. And down the bottom here, you'll notice that we've got a bunch of options. We can either share it and then send it over there, or we can move or copy. Now, the reason that there's, there's only move is if we select move, if we do it to somewhere that's in the same location, it will actually move it. But what you notice here is if you send it to a cloud storage like iCloud Drive, it'll actually copy it. So see how when we're here on our iPad, if we moved it just to another folder on the iPad, it'll just move it. If we're moving it to iCloud Drive or some sort of cloud storage, it'll copy it. So let's grab this one and let's just stick it here in my GarageBand iOS folder on the iCloud Drive. And once we've done that, you can see it's still there because it's copied. But if we go to iCloud Drive and we go to GarageBand for iOS, there it is. And you can see it's got this little cloud icon. That means it's uploading it right now. You can see down the bottom here, it's waiting to upload that. And in just a couple of minutes, that'll be completely uploaded to the cloud. And that means if something happens to this iPad, I have got a copy of that file. It also means I can then go and open that file on my iPhone or my Mac, or I can share it using iCloud Drive to another user, which is a very cool thing. And if you want to learn about collaborating and sharing, I've got other videos here on the channel that cover that. So that is done now and we're good to go. The next thing that I'm gonna show you here is how we can actually zip up a file or multiple files here in Files app. Now, why is this important? Well, you'll notice over here that we've got things like Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive. They don't support Mac files. So this, or they don't support iOS files. So this one here, this GarageBand file is a .band project. So if you're in iOS, if you're on your iPhone or your iPad, you can open this, you can copy it, you can do what you like. But something like Google Drive, for instance, will see this as a folder of files. And as soon as you copy it there and try to copy it back to another iPad or iPhone, it will be corrupted. It will not work. The simple way around this is to compress your file. So all we do for this is hit the select button at the top here, select whatever files we wanna compress. So if we just wanna compress this one, we tap on that. In the bottom right, there's a more option here, we tap on that and we hit compress. That will zip this sucker up, boom, it is zipped. It is good to go. Now we can use that same method we used before. By the way, there's two ways to do this. I'll just show you this quickly. We can hit select tap there and hit the buttons down the bottom just like we did before or we can actually tap and hold if we tap and hold on one of these all of the options that are down the bottom here will pop up here so this can be an even easier way to do it so it's already zipped up there so if we hit the copy button there and we want to say come and bring this and copy it into our google drive well guess what we can do that we can now tap and hold here we can paste it in 
and boom, it's going to start copying that across uh, to our Google Drive. Now, it probably hasn't worked immediately because some of the integrations here don't work amazingly. I'm going to be upfront with you about that. It's why I use iCloud Drive more than anything. Sometimes you Google Drive and your OneDrive, you have to go back to the original app and like authenticate it and uh, open it up. It's why I tend to do things a slightly different way, which is that once it's in your files, open up the other app. So open up your Google Files app and then just add it. So go in there, say add file and add it from your files. You're probably looking at this going, my goodness, John. Johns, you've got a lot of files in there. I would lose my ever-loving mind. It gets even worse when you come in here to GarageBand. I've got multiple folders. I've got multiple files. It's all happening here. How do I find my stuff when I need to find it? Well, I use the search function. It's right up the top here. And if you don't see the search, uh, on some devices, you need to pull down. So just pull down on that and some of these buttons, especially on your iPhone, sometimes you'll just need to pull down and it will expose your search and it will expose some of these options that we'll look at in a minute. So to search, say I want to find my project called Anxiety. I come in here, I type in Anxiety and boom, it starts searching. Now it'll search up the top here in my recent by default. I can then say, no, I only want things in iCloud Drive or I only want things in this GarageBand for iOS folder and its subfolders. So the search functionality is actually pretty good. It'll help you find anything. Let's find my project called Hold On. There you go. There's all the different versions of Hold On and I can use these. I can come in here and just open it up and boom, we're gonna come in here and we can instantly start. Start playing that. It opens it up directly in GarageBand straight from files. Super duper handy. And of course, once we search for stuff, we can then use the same functionality. So if I do that again, hold on, and we wanted to say, do something with this that wasn't it, we could tap and hold on it. And look, we get all these options as well. So we can see where it's located, we can share it, we can copy it, we can compress it, we can do all the good things from there uh, that we can do from our files. So that is another cool feature that we have here. The last one that I'm gonna show you here is when you're running out of space, you can go, hang on, I've just deleted a bunch of stuff and my iPad or iPhone is still telling me I'm out of space. What the actual Apple? Well, it's because of this folder here. <laughs> it's called recently deleted. And this folder can be your best friend or your worst enemy. If you accidentally delete something, like, so I've got this picture of me and Jade here, classic picture, yeah. And let's just say I'm just like, oh, I'm playing around one day and I'm like, oh, I don't want this picture anymore. And I come in here and I delete it. It goes away, right? but it doesn't. Where does it go? It goes to my recently deleted folder. If we now go to recently deleted, there it is. It's right there. And if I tap on it, it says it can't be open because it's in recently deleted. If I want it, I need to tap and hold and choose recover. So let's do that. We'll tap and hold and we'll choose recover. Boom, my photo is back. I've got it back in my iCloud drive. But what if these are all things I want to get rid of forever? Well, no problem. All I need to do is hit the select button in the top right and down the bottom, we can either recover all of them or be, because I know that I don't want to keep any of these, I'll just hit delete all and it will say, are you super duper 100% positive sure? And I go, yes. And we delete it. Boom, gone history and uh, we don't have those anymore. So that will actually free up space on your iPad or iPhone if you are using too many files, which let's be honest, most of us are.